Well, hi and welcome. Uh, my name's Steve Layson. I'm part of the ministry team here at Jeringong Anglican Church, and I'd like to welcome you to our online prayer book service today. Uh, in a little while, we'll be following the order of service that you'll find on page 18 of the Green Australian Prayer Book. If you have one of those handy, you might find it helpful. But to begin our service, we're going to start off by singing praise to our Heavenly Father. So if you can now take up your prayer books and turn to page 18, uh, we're following the, the order of service that you find there. The service begins with, on a note of praise. You are worthy, our Lord and God, to receive glory and honour and power, for you created all things, and by your will they existed and were created. In John 4 we read, God is spirit, and those who worship him must worship in both spirit and truth. Now, of course, we don't always do that, do we? We don't always love God as we should. We don't give him the honour that he deserves. And so the Bible encourages us when we come together to confess our sins to, to him. It uh, encourages us in Joel chapter 2 with the character of our God. Joel writes, Return to the Lord your God, for he is gracious and merciful, slow to anger, and abounding in steadfast love. And it's important that we do that that we don't try and hide our sins away. For John reminds us, if we say we have no sin, we deceive ourselves, and the truth is not in us. But if we confess our sins, God is faithful and just, and will forgive us our sins, and cleanse us from all unrighteousness. Dear friends, the scriptures urge us to acknowledge our many sins and not to conceal them in the presence of God, our Heavenly Father, but to confess them with a penitent and obedient heart so that we may be forgiven through his boundless goodness and mercy. We are always humbly to admit our sins before God, but chiefly when we meet together, whether even if it's online, to give thanks for the benefits we have received at his hands, to offer the praise that is due to him, to hear his holy word and to ask what is necessary for the body as well as for the soul. Therefore, let us draw near to the throne of our gracious God and say together, Almighty and most merciful Father, we have strayed from your ways like lost sheep. We have left undone what we ought to have done, and we have done what we ought not to have done. We have followed our own ways and the desires of our own hearts. We have broken your holy laws. Yet, good Lord, have mercy on us. Restore those who are penitent, according to your promises declared to mankind, 
in Jesus Christ our Lord. And grant, merciful Father, for his sake, that we may live a godly and obedient life to the glory of your holy name. Amen. Merciful Lord, grant your faithful people pardon and peace, that they may be cleansed from all their sins and serve you with a quiet mind through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. In response to the forgiveness that we've been declared from God, we turn to page 22 and we continue our service. Open our lips, O Lord, and we shall declare your praise. O God, make speed to save us. O Lord, make haste to help us. Glory to God, Father, Son and Holy Spirit, as in the beginning, so now and forever. Amen. Let us praise the Lord. The Lord's name be praised. Will you join with me as we read through Psalm 95? O God, let us sing out to the Lord. Let us shout in triumph. O come, let us sing out to the Lord. Let us shout in triumph to the rock of our salvation. Let us come before his face with thanksgiving and cry out to him joyfully in psalms. For the Lord is a great God and a great King above all gods. In his hand are the depths of the earth and the peaks of the mountain are his also. The sea is his and he made it. His hands moulded dry land. Come, let us worship and bow down and kneel before the Lord our Maker. For he is the Lord our God. We are his people and the sheep of his pasture. Today, if only you would hear his voice, do not harden your hearts as Israel did in the wilderness. When your fathers tested me, put me to proof that they had seen my works, of whom I swore in my wrath they shall not enter my rest. Glory to God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, as in the beginning, so now and forever. Amen. We're going to hear from God's word now. This morning's reading is from uh, the book of Deuteronomy, beginning uh, chapter 4, beginning at, uh, at verse 1, verses 1 to 11. Hear now, O Israel, the decrees and laws I am about to teach you. Follow them so that you may live and may go in and take possession of the land that the Lord, the God of your fathers, is giving you. Do not add to what I command you and do not subtract from it, but keep the commands of the Lord your God that I give you. You saw with your own eyes what the Lord did at Baal Pur. The Lord your God destroyed from among you everyone who followed the Baal of Pur, but all of you who held fast to the Lord your God are still alive today. See, I have taught you decrees and laws as the Lord my God commanded me, so that you may follow them in the land you are entering to take possession of it. Observe them carefully, for this will show your wisdom and understanding to the nations who will hear about all these decrees and say, Surely this great nation is a wise and understanding people. What other nation is so great as to have their gods near them the way the Lord our God is near us whenever we pray to him? And what other nation is so great as to have such righteous degree, decrees and laws as this body of the laws I am setting before you today? Only be careful and watch yourselves closely so that you do not forget the things your eyes have seen or, or let them slip from your heart as long as you live. Teach them to your children and to their children after them. Remember the day you stood before the Lord your God at Horeb when he said to me, assemble the people before me to hear my words so that they may learn to revere me as long as they live in the land and may teach them to their children. You came near and stood at the foot of the mountain while it blazed with fire to the very heavens with black clouds and deep darkness. Here in us the reading. The Holy Gospel is written in the 22nd chapter of the Gospel according to St Luke, beginning at the 7th verse. 
Judas has just been paid by the high priest to betray Jesus to, to them. <clears throat> then came the day of unleavened bread on which the Passover lamb had to be sacrificed. Jesus sent Peter and John saying, go and make preparations for us to eat the Passover. Where do you want us to prepare for it, they asked. He replied, as you enter the city, a man carrying a jar of water will meet you. Follow him to the house that he enters and say to the owner of the house, the teacher asks, where is the guest room where I may eat the Passover with my disciples? He will show you a large room upstairs, all furnished. Make preparations there. They left and found things just as Jesus had told them. So they prepared the Passover. When the hour came, Jesus and his apostles reclined at the table. I have eagerly desired to eat this Passover with you before I suffer. For I tell you, I will not eat it again until it finds fulfilment in the kingdom of God. After taking the cup, he gave thanks and said, Take this and divide it among you. For I tell you, I will not drink again from the fruit of the vine until the kingdom of God comes. And he took bread, gave thanks and broke it, and gave it to them, saying, This is my body given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. In the same way, after the supper, he took the cup, saying, this cup is the new covenant in my blood, which is poured out for you. This is the gospel of the Lord. Before we think further on those passages, will you join with me as we remember the things that bind us uh, together in Christ? Let's say the Apostles' Creed. You'll find it on page 26. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, dead and buried. He descended into hell. The third day he rose again from the dead. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of God the Father Almighty. From there he shall come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and a life everlasting. Amen. Well, it can be pretty important to have a good memory, can't it? Uh, it's good to remember to buy the milk on the way home, otherwise you won't have anything for breakfast tomorrow morning. It's good to remember to turn off the oven when you go away. It's good to be able to remember your coursework when you're sitting for an exam. It's good to be able to remember to pay the rego on time. Good to remember birthdays and anniversaries, especially if you don't want to spend the night on the couch. Um, it's good to remember the good times, um, like the holidays. And if anybody was interested, I've got 4,000 photos from our recent holiday you can come and look at. Um, so it's good to remember good times, but it also can be helpful to remember the bad things. Um, you know, last time I drove down this road, the traffic was terrible, so this time I'll go a different, door, different way. It's important to remember to help us learn from our mistakes. There was a Spanish philosopher, um, George Santayana, who said, those who forget the mistakes of the past are doomed to repeat them. And it can even be good to remember things that we didn't experience ourselves. That's why every year in Australia we celebrate Anzac Day. It's good to remember what other people have sacrificed for our freedoms. Well, today we start a new series which is simply called Remember. And today's sermon is titled, Lest We Forget. Throughout the scriptures, we're told how important it is for the people of God to have a good memory. I wonder if you remember uh, the la over the last four years that uh, here in um, Jeringong Anglican, we've been looking through the first four books of the Old Testament. We looked at Genesis and we saw the creation, the fall, the promise, God's promises to Abraham and how they started to, those promises started to come true for, in his family. Then we saw the book of Exodus. Uh, that family became a nation. They were freed from slavery and brought to Mount Sinai where God gave them, uh, gave them the law. Then in, in the third uh, book of the Bible, in Leviticus, uh, we saw uh, Moses expanding on that law, uh, still based at the, bat, um, in, at the foot of Mount Sinai. Um, and God, God expands what, uh, what, what the law means and what it means for his people to be holy. 
And then last year, we saw the Israelites leave Mount Sinai. And they ended up wandering through the desert for 40 years and ended up, at the end of the book, back at the Promised Land, ready to go back in. And so today, we get to the book of Deuteronomy. This book is actually a series of three sermons given by Mo Moses to help Israel remember. You might notice as we go along, there's a lot of stuff in this book that we've actually seen before. Uh, in fact, as you compare the book of Deuteronomy uh, and, Ex and Exodus particularly, you'll find that there's a lot of the same content. Um, in the first four chapters of uh, Deuteronomy, we find out why. Let's have a quick look uh, at the first three chapters. If you've got a Bible, you might like to follow along. Uh, you can skim through with me. In chapter 1, verse 2, verse two we're told that it takes a, a grand total of 11 days to walk from Sinai, which is uh, Horeb, um, to uh, Kadesh Barnea, which is the southernmost point uh, of the Promised Land. It only takes 11 days, and yet it's taken Israel 40 years. Why is that? Well, Moses reminds us in the first three chapters, lest we forget. It's what we saw last year in the book of Numbers. In chapter 1, we're told that God brought, told them to leave Mount Sinai and go to Canaan. Uh, when they got there, when they got to the edge of the Promised Land, they sent spies into the land. You'll remember this story. Um, they saw how bountiful the land was, but also how uh, scary the people were. And they were afraid. And so they rebelled against God. As a punishment, we're, we're told in chapter 2, um, God's punishment for them was that they were to wander the desert uh, until the last of that generation died out. And so that's what happened. For the next 40 years, they wandered through the wilderness. And then at the end of chapter 2 and chapter th into chapter 3, we hear how God brings them back to the Promised Land, this time by a slightly different route. They come via the east side uh, of the Jordan River. We're, to we're told that they uh, actually defeat some of the kings on the eastern side of the Jordan River, uh, and they start to portion out the land, two and a half tribes, a given land on the eastern side of the river. Uh, and then in chapter, at the end of chapter 3, Moses tells the Israelites that he's actually not going to go with them into the Promised Land. Though he's led them for the last 40 years, brought them out of Egypt to Mount Sinai and now back to the Promised Land, um, he wants to tell them that he's actually, God's told him he's not going to go in. So before he goes, before he leaves them, uh, he wants to remind them of the things that God told their parents. This is a second reading of the law, if you like. Um, that's why it's called Deuteronomy. Deutero uh, is uh, suffix means a uh, prefix means um, second, and nomos means law. So it's a second law. It's a repeat of what we've seen already. That's why there's so much familiar material. The essence of this message is that they need to remember, and specifically today in chapter four, we're told that they need to remember the bad things, their bad choices. We, they need to remember God's goodness, God's good choices. And then they need to remember to obey. So firstly, they need to remember their bad choices. You know, sometimes it can be really helpful to let go of mistakes that we've had in the past. Not Clinging to our past can just cripple us with, with guilt or shame. But it can also be helpful to remember, to not, not to completely forget them. Because it's by remembering these bad things, these bad choices that we've made, that we can be sure not to fall into them again. You may remember, for instance, if that you've ruined a relationship by not communicating properly. Well, next time, you'll, you'll learn to be, a, to be able to communicate better. And so Moses wants to remind the Israelites of their mistakes. He's already, as we've already seen, reminded of their foolish choice not to trust God when they came to the Promised Land the first time. Well, now they've got a second chance. They've got a, a do-over. Will they trust God this time? Again, they're about to go into the promised land. And the people in the land have not changed. They're still there. Um, so will they trust God this time? They must remember what happened last time so that they don't make the same mistake. The other mistake he reminds them of in chapter 4, verse 3, is of what happened at Baal Peor. Uh, you can read about that in Numbers chapter 25. Um, you may remember the story when they were seduced by the women of Moab into worshipping Baal. Moses tells them to remember what happened to those people. It was the people who uh, stayed faithful to God, who held to God, who survived, while the others were destroyed. We're going to think a little bit more about this next week, but suffice to say that when the Israelites go into the Promised Land, uh, they're going to be tempted to follow other gods, the gods of the people who live there. So will they make the same mistake? 
and so bear the same consequences. They need to remember the bad choices of the past and their mistakes, not so they can dwell on them, but so they can learn from them. So it is important for us to remember the, ba- um, the bad choices, but they also need to remember, one of the reasons to remember those bad choices is because it actually highlights, the contrast highlights the goodness of God. And so that's the second thing they need to remember, the goodness of God. And they're going to see, they've seen the goodness of God in two ways. Firstly, of course, through his rescue. He's rescued them f- uh, from Egypt and brought them to the promised land. They've re- been rescued from something and for something. Um, he's taken them from bondage to bounty, from slavery to security. He's made and kept the promises he made to Abraham many years before. God has rescued them with his mighty hand. And as you go through the book of of Deuteronomy, you'll see the importance of remembering that salvation. Chapter 16, there are three festivals that are outlined there. The Passover, the Feast of Weeks and the Feast of Tabernacles. And all of them are, are to be celebrated to help them remember that God brought them out from slavery in Egypt, that um, that he's brought them to the promised land, and that, they, that the harvest, uh, the bounty of that land, comes as a gift of God, um, even though they, they, they re- rejected him and wandered through the wilderness. God wants to remember them to remember his rescue. But he also wants them to remember that he has spoken to them. And so in verse 10, uh, Moses says, Remember the day you stood before the Lord your God at Horeb, when he said to me, Assemble the people before me to hear my words, so that they may learn to revere me as long as they live in the land and may teach them to their children. You came near and stood at the foot of the mountain while it blazed with fire to the very heavens with black clouds and deep darkness. Then the Lord spoke to you out of the fire. You heard the sound of words but saw no form. There was only a voice. He declared to you his covenant, the Ten Commandments, which he commanded you to follow, and then he wrote them on two stone tablets. Moses says, don't forget what it was like standing at the foot of Mount Sinai uh, with the black fire and the clouds everywhere and the thunder, um, as well as God's voice thundering through it all. God gave them the commandments, and he gave the commandments to guide them when they got into the promised land. God was going to continually speak to them. And Moses says, this is not something to take for granted. He says, where does this ever happen before? And if you keep on reading in chapter 4, um, down to verse 32, uh, we read, Ask uh, from one end of the heaven to the other, has anything so great as this ever happened? Or has anything like it ever been heard of? Has any other people heard the voice of God speaking out of fire as you have and lived? Has any God ever tried to take for himself one nation out of another nation? by testings, by signs and wonders, by war, by a mighty hand and outstretched arm, or by great and awesome deeds, like all the things the Lord your God did for you in Egypt before your very eyes. This has never been done before, says Moses. Uh, It's an amazing redemption that God has made, rescuing you out of Egypt, and it's an amazing revelation. What other God uh, has been so intimately connected with his people? The gods of this world sit up in the heavens, uh, and the gods that the people worship at, at, at a distance. They don't, they don't um, relate to, their, uh, to the humans uh, who worship them. Uh, and yet Moses says God uh, has act, indeed reached out and rescued you by, with his mighty hand and he has spoken to you. These things are uniquely yours, he says, because of God's choose, choice to love them, he says in verse 37. What they have is special, and they should never forget it. Now, as I, as I was reading those verses, you may be um, thinking, well, Moses is having a bit of a senior moment here. Uh, he's forgotten that it actually wasn't them. It was their parents who experienced these things. But in chapter 5, verse 3, uh, Moses says, It was not with our ancestors that the Lord made his covenant, but with us and with all of us here who are alive today. Moses was, uh, even though they weren't there physically with their parents, um, they weren't the ones who died in the wilderness. Uh, but God says, no, no this, pr- these promises, this voice was actually for you. God's voice was for the people of that day, not just for the people who were actually physically present there. 
And of course, it wasn't just for them. Uh, it was something that they needed to pass on. And so in chapter 4, verse 9, uh, Moses says, Only be careful and watch yourselves closely so that you don't forget the things your eyes have seen or let them fade from your heart as long as you live. Teach them to your children and their children after them. You know, as this message um, wasn't just God's word to their parents, it's a God word for them that they must hold on to, but also it's just as much a word for their children and their grandchildren and so on. Which, of course, is how this links with us. Although we weren't there on that day, this challenge is there still for us. It's important for us, just as much for the people of Moses' time, uh, the time that Moses is speaking to, it's important for us to have good memories. Just like the Israelites, it's important for us to remember the bad choices, where we've come from. In Ephesians chapter 2, verse 3, Paul puts it this way, All of us also lived among them at one time, gratifying the cravings of our flesh and following its desires and thoughts. Like the rest, we were by nature objects deserving of wrath. And then in, chapter two, in verse 12, the same chapter, he says, Remember that, that at that time you were separate from Christ, excluded from citizenship in Israel, and foreigners to the covenants of, God, of the promise, without hope and without God in the world. That's where we've come from. You may remember last week, we were looking at 1 Corinthians chapter 6, as Paul mentions though the immoral and the sinful, he says, that is what some of you were. We need to remember where we have come from. Each one of us have turned away from God. We, we deserve nothing from him. Which, of course, uh, it's important for us to remember that, but it's also remember how, we've cha- how things have changed for us. And that's, of course, we need to remember the goodness of God. And just like the Israelites, we need to remember his salvation. That's where our, our second reading from today, the passage from Luke chapter 22 comes in. Jesus, uh, on the night before he dies, takes bread and gives it to his disciples and says, Take and eat this in remembrance of me. My, this is my body which is given for you. Jesus says, "Look, we don't look back and remember the salvation from Egypt. We don't need to look back to that. We look at something much greater. Christ's death. Um, to rescue us from sin and death. And again, when Jesus says to his disciples, this is given for you, he's not just talking about his disciples. He's talking about all those who would follow uh, through faith in their name. It's given for you and for me. He actually means us. And just like Moses says, has anything like this ever happened before? Well, we, we ask that same question when we look at what Jesus has done for us. Has any other God uh, done what Jesus did? In Philippians 2, verse 6 to 7, uh, where Paul says, uh, Jesus, who, being in very nature God, uh, made himself nothing, becoming obedient to death, even death on a cross. God has uh, done an even greater for, uh, rescue for us than he did for, for Israel. He saved us from an eternal uh, eternity of c- condemnation to eternal life. What an incredible uh, salvation that God has given to us that we must remember. So we remember the goodness of God in his salvation, but also in his word to us. God has spoken to the Israel, God spoke to the Israelites through fire and smoke, but he's spoken to us even more clearly, if you can imagine that, even more clearly than a, a booming voice. God has spoken to, us, spoken to us more clearly through his son. In Hebrews chapter 1, we, have, we read these words. In the past, God spoke to our ancestors through the prophets at many times and in various ways. But in these last days, he has spoken to us by his Son, whom he appointed heir of all things, and through whom he also made the universe. The Son is the radiance of God's glory, the exact representation of his being, sustaining all things by his powerful word. God speaks to us and continues to speak to us through his Son, Jesus. So let's not forget where we've come from, what God has done to bring us out of there, out of the danger. And the fact that God continues to speak to us. Now, of course, Moses doesn't just uh, give these instructions to the Israelites so that they can intellectually uh, are able to say, yes, I remember that. I remember that day when that thing happened. Um, It it all has a purpose. It has a point. Uh, It's there in the very first verse. uh, In chapter 4, verse 1, when he says, Now, Israel, hear the decrees and laws I'm about to teach you. Follow them so that you may live and may go in and take possession of the land your God, 
the Lord your God of your ancestors is giving you. You need to remember so that they might obey. The point of this passage is so that they might listen and obey God. Remembering is not just an intellectual exercise, it requires and res- results in action. Uh, in verse 5, he says that God is giving them laws to show them how they are to live in the land. Um, what we see in the book of Deuteronomy is a blueprint for them, for the Israelites to show them how to live when they get into the promised land. You see, they're not going to be at Mount Sinai anymore with all the clouds and the thunder and the lightning, uh, hearing the, the thundering voice of God. And Moses isn't going to be even with them anymore as God's mouthpiece to go in uh, and, to, and to be that intermediary between them and God. But it doesn't mean that God doesn't want to speak to them anymore. They still have God's word to carry around with them. They have a portable Sinai, if you like, uh, in the words of the, that Moses is giving them. And so Israel are challenged to obey when they enter the promised land. For their own good, uh, as you see in chapter 1, verse 40, keep these, his decrees and commands, which I'm giving you today, today, so that it may go well with you and your children after you, and that you may live long in the land your Lord, Lord gives you uh, for all time. That if you listen to these commands and obey them, then you'll be God's people in God's place uh, and continue to be forever. So it's for their own good that they need to listen and obey, but they also need to obey so that people will take notice. The world will take notice. In verse 6 to 8, uh, Moses tells them, Observe them carefully, for this will show your wisdom and understanding to the nations, who will hear about all these decrees and say, Surely this great nation is a wise and understanding people. What other nation is so great as to have their gods come near them, the way the Lord our God is near us? Whenever we pray to him. And what other nation is so great as to have such righteous decrees and laws as this body of laws I am setting before you today? They are to obey God's commands so that the world will sit up and take notice. It's for the good of the nations as well as for themselves that they will see God in them uh, and see that his commands are good. And of course, this is our take home for today, isn't it? Uh, We don't have a mountain of fire to go to. We don't have a Moses parting oceans and raining food from heaven uh, and bringing personalised messages uh, from God for each one of us. But we still have God's word. We have a clearer word uh, revealed most clearly through through the Lord Jesus. Uh, We have a word that culminates in our salvation and salvation not just for us but also for the whole world. And so we need to listen to this word. We need to listen. We need to read and, and hear and obey. We need to not just listen to God's word, but put it into practice. Jesus says in Matthew 7 verse 26 that the wise man or the wise woman is the one who hears his words and puts them into practice. And his brother James puts it this way, very similarly. He says, do not merely listen to the word and so deceive yourselves, but do what it says. So are you remembering God's word? Are you listening to God's word? But more than that, are you obeying God's word? It's really important for Christians to have a good memory. We need to remember where we have come from. We were once enemies of God, lost and without hope. Do you remember those times? We also need to remember the goodness of God, how he brought us from darkness to light, light, from death to life. From no hope to complete hope. Do you appreciate the amazing and wonderful things it is that our creator has done for us? That he's actually interested in you and me. And that he wants to speak to us. How incredible that is. Do you remember the goodness of God in his salvation and the fact that he wants to speak to you? And if you remember these truths, are you listening to his voice? Are you remembering and obeying? Are you listening to what God has to say in his word? Do not let me listen to the word and so deceive yourselves. Do what it says. It's, re- it's so important for us as Christians to look back and remember. And I hope as you join us in this, travel, this journey through the book of Deuteronomy that you're encouraged and challenged to remember where we've come from, to remember what God has done for us, and to remember to obey.
lest we forget. Let me pray. Dear Heavenly Father, we thank you for all your goodness to us. Thank you for, for rescuing us from darkness and bringing us into light, to taking us from being your enemies to being your friends, to take us from the point of death to being people who can now receive eternal life. Lord, in response to what you have done, we pray that you would help us to always remember. Help us to remember your goodness, to praise you for what you have done, but most importantly, to obey. Help us to listen to your word. Help us to commit it to memory um, so that as we go out into the world, we're not um, sitting here listening to a sermon, Lord, that we might know that you are with us and that we might obey you in all that we do so that we might honour you, that things may go well for us, but also so that others might be drawn into your kingdom. For we ask this in Jesus' name and for his glory. Amen. Well, having heard God speak to us, let's respond to him in prayer. You might like to turn to page tw the bottom of page 26 in your prayer books. The Lord be with you. Let us pray. Lord, have mercy on us. Christ, have mercy on us. Lord, have mercy on us. Our Father in heaven, Hallowed be your name, your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread, forgive us our sins, as we forgive those who sin against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power and the glory are yours, now and forever. Amen. Lord, show us your mercy and grant us your salvation. Lord, save the King, and mercifully hear our prayers. Clothe your ministers with righteousness, and make your chosen people joyful. Lord, save your people, and bless your inheritance. Give peace in our time, O Lord, for you are our help and strength. Create in us clean hearts, O God, and renew us by your Holy Spirit. Let us pray the collect for today. Father, keep before us the wisdom and love you have revealed in your Son. Help us to be like him in word and deed. For he lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God for ever and ever. Amen. And a prayer for peace. O God, the author and lover of peace, in knowledge of whom stands our eternal life, whose service is perfect freedom. Defend us, your servants, in all assaults of our enemies, that surely trusting in your defence, we may not fear the power of any adversaries, through the might of Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Our prayer for the morning. Lord our Heavenly Father, mighty and everlasting God, we thank you for bringing us safely to this day. Keep us by your mighty power, and grant that today we fall into no sin, neither run into any kind of danger, but lead and govern us in all things, that we may always do what is righteous in your sight, through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Now turning over to page 34, we want to pray for our King, Charles, and for all those uh, who rule in this land. Almighty God, the, foundation, the fountain of all goodness, we humbly pray that you will bless our sovereign Lord, Ch King Charles, and all who po hold public office in this land, that all things may be ordered in wisdom, righteousness and peace, to the honour of your holy name and the good of your, your church and people, through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. We want to pray also for, our church, for the church across the world. We pray... Uh, for the unity of tr under the truth of the gospel. We pray for all missionaries who take out the gospel on our behalf and, and on all different mission organisations. And we pray for our own church that God will be at work in and through us, uh, for our bishop and archbishop, uh, that God would do great things through his people. Almighty and eternal God, you alone work great marvels. Send down your spirit of saving grace on all Christian people, especially our bishops and other pastors and the congregations in their care, that they may truly please you. Pour upon them the continual dew of your blessing, 
Grant this, Lord, for the honour of our advocate and mediator, Jesus Christ. Amen. And finally, acknowledging that in our world there is much difficulty and much pain, we pray for those who are the victims of natural disasters like earthquakes, floods and fires, but also as who suffer from uh, human disasters of uh, warfare, uh, internal strife, terrorism, uh, abuse, uh, those who are uh, refugees, all those who are in need around the world. O oh God, creator and preserver of all mankind, we humbly pray for all sorts and conditions of men and women, that you would be pleased to make your way known to them, your saving power among all nations. Especially we pray for the welfare of your Catholic Church, that it may be guided and governed by your good spirit, so that all who profess and call themselves Christians may be led in the way of truth and hold the faith in unity of spirit in the bond of peace and in righteousness of life. We commend to your fatherly goodness all who are in any way afflicted or distressed, that it may be please you to comfort and relieve them according to their needs, giving them patience in their suffering and a happy issue out of all their afflictions. All, we, all this we ask for the sake of Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. And finally, will you join with me as we uh, finish by our prayer time by praying a prayer of thanks in the middle of page 36. Most merciful Father, we humbly thank you for all your gifts so freely bestowed on us, for life and health and safety, for power to work and leisure to rest, and for all that is beautiful in creation and in the lives of, of people. We pray, praise and glorify your holy name, but above all, we thank you for your spiritual mercies in Christ Jesus our Lord, for the means of grace and for the hope of glory. Fill our hearts with all joy and peace in believing through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Almighty God, you have promised to hear the petitions of those who ask in your Son's name. Mercifully accept us who have now made our prayers to you and grant us those things which we have asked in faith according to your will through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. And will you join with me in the grace? The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ and the love of God and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with us all evermore. Amen. Well, thank you for joining us for our online prayer book service today. And can I encourage you to join us again next week as we, uh, as we come and we worship God and hear from his word again. But before we finish, will you join with me as we sing our last hymn of praise to God? <laughs>